We're going to talk about creating the wisdom of crowds, particularly how you would use collective wisdom in your classroom by creating collaborative environments. And to do that, I want to talk a little bit about the science of the wisdom of crowds. Now, this was discussed in a book called The Wisdom of Crowds by James Sirwicky, and this is one of the stories that he used to illustrate the ways in which um, we have to first start thinking about how we set up collaborative environments. So, in the wisdom of crowds, there is the story of a boat, a uh, submarine, the USS Scorpion, which goes missing. It goes missing on May 21st in 1967, and it's lost in the ocean. And losing a ship in the ocean many times means uh, that you may not be able to find it because it's a vast and expansive place. It's not easy to, to track things down. And it just disappeared. It didn't, uh, between transmissions, they had one starting point where the transmission was, and then it never reported in its next check-in. And so the Navy called in a man named John Craven, and they asked him if there was a way that he could um, begin to gather up information and use that information to scientifically figure out where this boat might be. And what he set about doing was creating this distributed expert team. And the expert team in his view wasn't a bunch of captains of submarines um, who we would traditionally think this is who we're going to go find uh, to help us figure out where the sub is, sub is. But instead he thought the distributed expert team needed to be people that had any kind of background in the ocean. Currents, um, climatologists, anybody that was looking at, the, uh, at how the ocean worked and not just people that had captain subs. Um, there wasn't just one area of expertise because uh, the problem is if you get a bunch of people together who are going to think about uh, where the sub is and they're all trained and, and put together in the same kind of way, they're all going to come up with the same kind of answer. He also said that there wasn't going to be any group work, so he didn't want anybody to get together and begin talking with each other, comparing information, um, that everybody would be given the same set of information and then they would be asked to using just the knowledge that they had plus the facts that they were given to guess where the sub might be. No one out of this group picked the location of where the sub is. But what they did was they took all of the um, points on a graph where people thought the sub was going to be and they ran it through this mathematical equation. And they used this equation to come up with the location of where the sub likely was, and it turned out to be 220 yards away from where the sub actually existed. Now, this is a great and helpful story um, to understand how we began to think about creating these classroom collaborative environments where we can pull lots of different information um, to create something greater than what any individual can come up with. But the problem is, on a graph, it's very easy to come up with a mathematical equation, but we, um, particularly um, in journalism, which isn't really math-based, and we're not trying to come up with um, quantitative stuff, much of what we do may be more qualitative, not everybody's going to be able to use mathematical equations to plot out information, to figure out what is the right answer. So instead of looking at the wisdom of crowds and saying, this is the way in which you're going to derive information, it's helpful to look at the science of the wisdom of crowds and say, look, what are the ideas that we need to deploy in collaborative environments to make sure that we have the best chance um, for coming up with ideas that are more right than what any individual can come up with? And there's four that we know of. The first is that you need to have a diversity of private opinion. So we have that in classrooms, um, unlike um, John Craven, who had to go out and go outside of the Navy to find people that had, um, that weren't just sub-captains, who all were trained in the same kind of place, who were all trained to do the same kinds of things. They were going to come up with the same kinds of answers. Many of our classrooms are made up of uh, people from a variety of backgrounds who may have different minors, who may be of different ages, um, who are going to have come from different places and have a different perspective on knowledge. So the diversity of private opinion is important. It also means when you're setting up internal groups, for instance, you want to make sure one of the things that I always do in collaborative environments is make sure nobody of the same major is in groups whenever possible, um, that nobody of the same age is there. 
um, even if it's just freshman to sophomore, sophomore to junior, um, that there is an equal number number of men and women. Like I make the groups as diverse as possible. Instead of looking at skill sets, I look at backgrounds to create this diversity of private opinion. There has to be an independent thought um, in these groups, which means you can't sit around. You can't sit around and talk with each other. We have um, this thing that we do as humans where when we are put in a table, locked in a room, and we have to begin to figure out what is right and what is wrong, um, we begin to lose that independent thought and begin to think like a group. You have to decentralize the knowledge acquisition. And this is difficult because in a classroom environment, what we're used to doing is asking a question and then people respond to each other. And we've done two very bad things in terms of collective wisdom at that point. One, we've created groupthink, which takes us away from this ability um, to allow people to think independently. And we haven't decentralized knowledge acquisition. It, it is coming in through a central hub. So we need to find ways to allow people to contribute information however they want to do that. And then what we need to do is set up these aggregation um, sources. Now, if you're charting points on graphs, there are uh, mathematical equations that you can use to figure out um, what the collective answer is to a question. And that's a little bit more difficult in qualitative environments where you're trying to figure out what is the um, most right answer or the most logical answer. But what we know is these four ideas are what get us to these, um, what we call the wisdom of crowds. And so it's not enough for us to simply say, well, we're going to allow students to aggregate um, their information or we're going to, you know, it's going to be some kind of group environment and we'll just see what comes out of that. There's actually very specific ways that we go about setting up collaborative environments that we know information can come out of. And what we're going to look at um, in this particular presentation are different ways in which you can deploy technologies to do things like um, decentralize the knowledge acquisition, to allow independent thought to happen um, because people will be contributing on their own. Um, and as much as possible, begin to move aside this idea that we have to centralize ideas or that we can just turn kids loose, that we can actually use some basic um, science and, and some basic research principles to understand how to set up collaborative environments.